the bar is on the ocean floor. Yeah. <laughs> I was stuck on the fact that this person was nice. That's sad. I'm laughing because it's so relatable. And um, it is funny when I'm like, tell me exactly what made them so special. And it's like, they were nice and they were funny. And it's <laughs> We should all be okay. ashamed of ourselves. We should all be ashamed of ourselves. The Love and Order Podcast with your host, Lawyer Lamore. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on this podcast are not legal advice that can be relied on. They are based solely on the limited information provided. These opinions do not create any attorney-client relationship. Those seeking legal advice should contact an attorney in the appropriate jurisdiction and practice area. And we're back. Season two of Love and Order. I know it's been a while. I know it's been a while, but I am back making content. And this is the best episode for the season two launch. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you enjoy the episode. I know the lighting's bad in this episode. I know the lighting's bad, okay? So if you're watching on YouTube, which you should, because I show you pages from the breakup workbook that we're talking about in this episode with Kendra Allen. And just thank you for being here. If you have questions, comments, hit me up in the DMs. Love you. Bye. We have your breakup bestie, Kendra Allen. And Kendra, you and I met five years ago. Is that crazy? It's insane. It's insane because I think about where I was then and where I am now. And I'm like, huh? That was five years ago. It's it's really, really insane. And the fact that we've stayed in touch is a testament actually to how great your business idea was five years ago, because that's how I remembered you after the event where we met. Um I remember you were telling me, and maybe you told the group at the time that your business idea, and I think you were probably already in it at that time was breakup bestie and being in family law, dealing with people who are going through the ultimate breakup, right? I immediately thought, oh my God, this is the best resource for my clients, the best resource. And now you have 25,000 besties on TikTok, 112,000 on Instagram. After this, you have to tell me how you get followers on Instagram because that (laughs) I have no clue. I know how to we'll use We'll swap for TikTok because I am i i don't really know what I'm doing over there. So that's you great make, advice. <laughs> you make great content. I only know how to use the green screen on TikTok and it's gotten me w- where I am. But I mean, Instagram is a whole other beast. But I was just on your stories and I'm like, wow, she is giving amazing advice every single day to people asking real questions. And, you know, recently I was on stories and I, I kind of was laughing at the advice I saw other creators giving like relationship advice. And, you know, they're creators who their whole thing is based on lifestyle. And I'm not saying you have to be, you know, you have to have a certain background to give this advice, but the advice in my opinion was horrible. And I went, I, you know, on Instagram, I show more of uh, my, uh, you know, I give a little bit more attitude on Instagram stories. Right. And I was like, guys, what is this advice? You are people listening to this because these people have a lot of followers, a lot of followers. And it really makes me really sad because they're, you know, this is a breakup, a divorce, any of it at any age, at any point, at any stage is traumatic. It can be traumatic. And you talk about that in your workbook, which can I say, if you're watching on YouTube, this is the perfect size workbook. Okay. I know it's so nice and small. It is so nice and small. Okay. I have big hands, but it's the size of my hand. Okay. But it's still small. (laughs) It is so cute. And it's an actual workbook with exercises and advice. And it just puts everything into perspective. And, you know, before we get into the ins and outs of the workbook, which, you know, it's called the breakup workbook, you will be okay, which is, I know that's probably your mantra, right? Yeah. I want to know, Kendra, how... How, how, how did you think to do this? Yeah, um, it's such, well, first of all, I have to thank you because, so the, the event we met at was honestly the first time. So I was working for Danica Breitscher, which is how we met. Yes. And I had told Danica about this little idea that I had um, 
for breakup bestie. And that was like one of the first people I told. And then she had me like tell it in front of the whole event. Yes. And you came up to me and you were like, this is a really good idea. And honestly, that day was like a really big turning point for me, just like saying it out loud. And then like, getting confirmation from someone like you who I'm like you're the perfect person who would know if this is a good idea so mm -hmm. that was like so I have to thank you so much for that but so I I mean it's so I went through a really bad breakup which is why I started this like mm -hmm. so I went through a really bad breakup in 2015 but I think to back it up even further I got sober in 2013 um so I'm in recovery from drugs and alcohol and I think the biggest thing is when I asked for help in 2013 and said like I have a problem with drinking I need help there were specialized therapists, there was a treatment program, there were support groups, there were step by step guides, there were different books, there was like so much step by step guides, resources, so much advice. I was like, obviously, it's a hard thing to get sober. But like, it really I felt like I had a very strong game plan on how I was going to do it. And then in 2015, when I went through the breakup, you look up and I'm like, oh, there's none of that here, you know? And I didn't realize this at the time. Obviously, this is looking back, connecting a lot of dots. But, you know, when I went through the breakup in 2015, I had, it was like the first time where I was like, okay, again, not probably consciously, but I was like, okay, I want to figure out how to go through this breakup because I, this was like my third breakup where the, the guy broke up with me because they didn't want to get married or have kids. And I was like, okay, there's got to be something like, there's got to be like a pattern here. Like I literally keep going through the exact same relationship, the exact same breakup. So I was like, I'm going to figure out how to go through this breakup in like more of a healthy way. Cause I just had never done that before. And so I really, I went to therapy. I read books. I literally like asked women I knew who had gone through divorces. I'm like, can I sit down with you and just like ask like, what the heck I'm supposed to do here? So I just became like a sponge to get through my own breakup. And then after that, I started becoming the friend that people would go to or someone would go through a breakup and someone would say, you need to go talk to Kendra because she, you know, and I was really open about my breakup too. I'm, I'm a very open book. So I think that helped because people would start coming to me. Um, and then when I was going through this career change back in like 2017, my husband, my not husband then, but now husband asked what I really liked doing. And I was like, this is so strange, but I really, really like helping people with breakups. And I saw this huge gap online. I saw the terrible advice that was being given online. Oh, um, and I realized you're pretty much like at the mercy of either your friends when you're going through a breakup. Like, obviously, if you have the resources, a good therapist and things like that. But for the most part, you're kind of just at the mercy of like what you you know, what your friends tell you. And if you have supported friends, and I just felt like there should be something more out there. Wow. I'm so, so impressed. And what did you do before? So I've, I mean, I've had a few different careers. Um, I was a, I worked in corporate wellness right out of college. Um, and then I actually worked in like recovery. I was, um, I owned a female sober living house and worked at a treatment center doing admissions there. Um, and then when I went through that career change in 2017, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I have this idea. So I started working for Danica and then I like took another job in the like influencer space. And I was like, I want to learn, you know, how this works. Like how do online courses work? How do podcasts work? How does this whole online space work? And, you know, I'm so grateful for that time that I had in those positions. Cause I feel like it really taught me how to, how to run breakup bestie. Yeah, that is amazing. I didn't know that that event five or so years ago was the first time you actually talked about it. And I, that's, yeah, I'm so impressed. I'm when so I impressed. started the Instagram in 20 at the end of 2017, I didn't even tell like my close friends. I was like, mm -hmm. I feel so weird about this idea. To be fair, my dad told me it was a terrible idea. <laughs> What do men know? Kendra? I know. And he, you know, he doesn't know like an online course and like pod, right, right. you know, it's just so, um, so I was really nervous about the idea. So I did it very like anonymously in the beginning. Oh 
my gosh. I love that. And for those who don't know, Danica Breisha, the woman who brought us together, is a, a it, she's a powerhouse in the wellness space. She has self-care society. She does a lot of Instagram lives. I think they're part of the self-care society course, but just being on her page and in her space, you meet people like Kendra and you just you gravitate towards the people whose energy matches yours in those environments. And that was also the beginning of my wellness journey too. And to this day, there are like a handful of women that I still keep in touch with. You're one of them. And it is so nice because we just know that, you know, we, we, we get each other. Like we could just, hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, I could tell Kendra this, I could go to her. She'll think this is funny or she'll think yeah. this is smart. You know, we just know, we just know. And, um, your presence online is so refreshing because it's very obvious that you take your job very seriously and you're not answering basic questions about, you know, breakups and you're not giving, again, horrible advice. I mean, I, I don't even want to get into, you know, it's funny. I made <laughs> following that Instagram that I made about the bad advice and I was in a mood. I'll admit I was in a mood. I recorded a TikTok about the bad advice. And then I was sitting there like, oh, my God, people are going to think I'm attacking other people. I don't want them to think that. And I just kind of, you know, which is one of those exercises. Some people say, like, write a letter, like, to your ex and, you know, uh, and and not, yeah. don't post it. Don't send it. So it was one of those exercises for me. I'm like, Lamar, you're not a hater. This is going to make you look like, well, why are you doing this? So you're like, this one can live in drafts. Yeah, this is going <laughs> to live in drafts with the other 555. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. So I love, love, love this book just because this is real stuff. And sometimes you don't, you know, I know part of it is rally your team, right? Get your supporters yeah. together, get your friends together. And sometimes you don't have those people, but a yeah. resource like this and a page like yours gives you that. It gives you that space. And that that was when I saw this, I'm like the breakup workbook. Oh my God. That yeah. is something you can use through a breakup, not reading another book, not, you know, not none of, none of that mindless stuff. This is like exercises. Yeah. Getting, yeah. Getting things out of your head. Yeah. And like actually doing work. I mean, you know, yeah. there are so many great like relationship accounts on Instagram and it's, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. post these like really great quotes. And like, I like quotes too, as much as the next person, but like, quotes aren't going to get you to do something for the most part. Like they're just like, Oh, that feels really good to read or like, Oh, that hits. And then it's, you know, then, then you just like go about your day and do something else. So I was like, since I started this page, I always wanted it to be very action oriented. And so yes. when I was approached about doing a workbook, I was like, yes, this is like such a no brainer for me because that's what I want to teach. Like it's, you know, I, to write a book would be great. And there, you know, there's probably a lot of things in there, but like where people can actually do work and like change how they view themselves and the breakup and their ex, like that's what's powerful. I love that. So you were approached to create this. Yes. Yeah. Wow. When I was, um, <laughs> Uh, when I was seven months pregnant. <laughs> oh, Kendra. Oh, my God. So I literally got the first half of the book done November 11th and then gave birth November 13th and then finished the second half of the book when I was like two months postpartum. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> you have a Scorpio baby? I have a Scorpio baby. Mm -hmm. I'm a Scorpio baby. He's a oh, Scorpio wow. and I, I can like, I can see it already. I love him. He's oh, so fun and intense. My God. Is he going to marry uh, Danica's Billy, baby Billy girl? Uh, we can only, <laughs> one can only hope. So cute. What I that know. Would be? Oh my gosh. So you were in the depths of love writing a book. Yeah. About books. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I haven't gone through, you know, this year, end of May, it'll be eight, eight years since I've gone through a breakup. And mm -hmm. like, I don't, I feel, st I still feel so connected to breakups. It's so funny. Like, I mean, I'm so grateful for the, like the community that I built because I'm, I really feel like I have like my finger on the pulse of like what people going through breakups are, are experiencing. And I'm so big on like audience participation and things just because I'm able to make really relevant content 
because of that. So, um, so yeah, it's crazy not having gone through a breakup in like eight years. And that's all I talk about and write about. (laughs) It's funny because I always, you know, I always tell people because I get a lot of pushback sometimes from, you know, opposing counsel or opposing parties or whoever it is, even online when, you know, I've never been through a divorce, but I guide people through divorce. And I always remind them being outside of it is when you can give the best advice. You probably know more about divorce than almost anyone who's gone through a divorce because you've right. essentially gone through hundreds of divorces. <laughs> hundreds and yeah. hundreds of them. And the best person to get advice from is someone who has gone through what you are looking to gain advice on, right? And they're completely separated from it now. So yes. you actually know what it feels like on the other side. You actually know what helped you. You actually know what you didn't want to hear when you were going through a breakup and what you needed to hear that you didn't hear. So it's yeah. really, really important to have, you know, people that you follow or friends that you have to go to for this stuff that aren't, you know, don't go to the friend who still hates their ex and their whole entire life it's revolves totally. around it, right? Like they're not, yeah. they're not going to give you good advice. Maybe you can vent with them. Um, but you know, this stuff is so personal. It's so personal personal. Um, and you break it down into four, where did it go? Into four different steps, kind of, right? Four yes. different uh, parts. So the first part, and there, this is, this is so cute. The first part is assembling your first aid kit. So yeah. what is the breakup first aid kit? What does it look like? Yeah. So it's funny. Cause that's one of the first questions I get asked is like, okay, I just went through a breakup. What do I do? Kind of a thing. And you know, there's like two different camps. Cause there's the people who, which I can relate to this so much. Cause it's the kind of person I am that wants to like jump into action, like wants to book the therapy, like wants to get down to the bottom of it, like do all the things. And I have to be like, we got to pause for a mm-hmm. second. Um, And then there's a side that like just, you know, completely falls apart, which like I've been there too. And a lot of people do that. So the first aid kit is essentially just giving you tools to help keep your head above water. Because the Mm. the crazy thing about a breakup and over the years of me doing this, I realized like we, we as a society, like so severely underestimate the power of going through a divorce or a breakup. It's so traumatic. And when you go through a breakup, like it can happen on a Sunday and you have to go to work on Monday. It's like, yeah, it's wild. So a lot of this in the breakup first aid kit is about like, how can you still go to work? Like, how can you function? Um, how can you still keep up with your responsibilities while going through a breakup? So it's about like, how do you best utilize your support system? Um, how can you have like, routine set up in the mornings and at night to like allow you to be able to sleep and just how can you put a it's essentially a band-aid like how can you put a band-aid on to like stop the gushing blood while you're still just trying to navigate your life Um, because it's the feelings and stuff in the beginning are just too big to try to address right away so you Mm -hmm. just need to you need to get like a little bit of distance and you need to just kind of prove to yourself in the beginning that you can survive without this person So that's really the first aid kit of just like, how do you get through the day? Exactly. I was just, I was just staring at that chapter. And then after that is feel your feelings. And I know that a lot of people, it's like, they're thinking about how to get through the day, but they're thinking about the person and then they don't, you know, the last time I went through a breakup, it's like, I don't want to cry. If I don't cry, it's a good day. If I do cry, it's a bad day. And it's, you know, feel your feelings is so, so important. And do you, do you advise that when you're getting your, you know, your besties together, your breakup besties, right? You're, you're creating your own, your own crew. Do you advise Telling everyone everything that happened is that is that what it what it yeah it, it's you know? it, it's a tough question because I think yeah your friends should definitely know the extent of what happened part of the workbook like I do have people write out the mm-hmm. kind of the events of the breakup because what can happen during a breakup is you're telling the story so often. And then it kind of just takes on a life of its own. You know, you like start exaggerating certain parts and then you leave out certain parts. It's like you kind of go into this like, 
I'm going to tell you this story kind of a thing. So it is kind of important to like have on record, like an objective thing of what happened. Um, so I do think it's important to talk to your friends about the breakup. However, I also tell people it's also really important that you're still asking your friends like, hey, what's going on in your life? Like, how's that thing going at work? Like, how's your stuff? You know, you don't need to necessarily like ask your friend who's like going like getting married, like how the wedding plan, you know, it's like we can set certain boundaries. But what happens when you go through a breakup is we become like really self obsessed, which is fine. It's like something that we're going through. But it's really important to have opportunities to step out of yourself. So it is important to like, still go to a birthday dinner for your friend and just like exist in a world outside of your own head. That is really important because if you just sit and think and talk about the breakup all day, like work is great. I advise people like if you have to take the first day off of work, fine. But like it is important. And I hear it all the time. Like it is people are happy to go back to work because it gives them a distraction. So it's kind of like compartmentalizing things at certain points. I tell people like if you need to set a timer for like 15 minutes during the day where you're like, I'm going to be sad. I'm going to cry. Like I'm going to be mad. And then I'm going to like going to go to work, you know? So it's important. Like crying is very productive. Being sad is really productive. Um, But, but try to keep it compartmentalized. And the thing too, is like, if you're not getting your feelings out, they're still following you. They're probably just going to morph into anxiety and you're just going to feel like really anxious the entire day. Oh my God. And we all already do. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't need that. We don't. Yeah. But that We're is- all at our anxiety capacities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is such good advice because on my busiest days at work, you're right. You go in maybe at eight, nine, whatever it is. And you're, if you throw yourself into your work, which, you know, it isn't always healthy, but if you just stay focused, we should be focused at work. We shouldn't yeah. be picking up our phone and looking at stuff. <laughs> And you just, you know, you look at the clock and it's six, right? And then you have your dinner planned and you have this, but then, you know, you know, for 30 minutes later today, I can think about all the stuff that's, you know, all the intrusions in my head about this break. Yeah. And that's the thing too. That's what's hard about the breakup is you're probably going to be tempted to sit at home and not want Mm -hmm. to do anything. When in reality, that's one of the worst things that you can do. It's fine on certain times, but like, the worst thing that you can do is just sit and think because all you're going to do is sit and think about your ex and the breakup. You're going to replay it a million times. You're going to go step by step through every single thing that happened in the relationship, trying to figure out where it went wrong. And like, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. And what you said earlier is so important. Your friends are, you know, they're putting everything into being your friend because you need it the most right now. But being a friend to them is also important. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because people will say, like, I feel bad continuing to talk to my friends about it. And I say, like, your friends are like adults. Like, if they're really having a hard time, like, they can set boundaries with you. However, I know I feel like a much better friend and I feel so much comfortable going to my friends if I'm equally being a good friend, you know? Right, right. That's such good advice. That's such good advice. And now my favorite chapter, okay? Detoxing from your ex. And if you have the book, which you, you should... Okay, page 77 (laughs) of part two has a chart, okay? (laughs) Because part of detoxing from your ex is detoxing your social media, which you should do whether or not you're going through a breakup, let's be honest. We could all probably use this. And you you probably have this on your Instagram somewhere, but I'll also post this page because I love it. It is a chart and I can show it on YouTube now, but it is literally, I never know which way to move anything because of the camera. It's like, is it mirrored? Is it the left or the right? I don't even know. Okay, wow. (laughs) It's a chart. Basically, it's an exercise, right? It's full of exercises. So it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Venmo. We're going Venmo's to the it. sneaky I one. Yeah, love Venmo. I love Venmo. Well, when it comes to stuff like this, it is there is so much juice on Venmo. There is so much juice. And so on the chart on the top, it says mute, remove as friend or unfollow, and then block. So those yeah. are the three options with whoever it is on those, uh, on those social media platforms, how to deal with it. Right. So let's just go to Venmo really quickly. Yeah. For those who don't know, you can see, well, I don't want to say you can see what your ex is doing, whatever you can see. You can learn more about someone from their Venmo. by looking at their Venmo feed than anywhere else. Do they live with their partner? Do they split rent? 
you'll probably yeah. find that in Venmo. <laughs> Does the guy, you know, whoever is supposed to traditionally pay for dinner, is he always paying or are they splitting it? <laughs> like you can see those things on Venmo. Are they I going love to- going down a good Venmo rabbit hole, but not if you're going through a breakup and looking not at if your you're going line. through a breakup. Your head should be in this workbook and not yeah. the internet. But but I love this chart because first of all, it's it's fun. Exercises like this, it's it's just fun to do them. Or yeah, to so make some little it. X's and check marks. And yes. yeah, we all love a good check mark. It's awesome. So how do you decide who and what, you know, obviously yeah. this is for um this is for detoxing from your ex, but yes. are there other people you might want to detox from during the breakup as well? Totally. Yeah. I mean, if we think about like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm in my 30s. So like I I didn't experience this, but if can you, you can imagine going through a breakup 50 years ago, it was like you broke up and like maybe you run into them at like the grocery store, but like that's it. And now we're in an age where you can know everything about your ex, especially if there's someone that's like relatively active on social media. So, um, so yeah, I definitely recommend at the bare minimum muting your ex right away because mm. here's the on thing. everything. On everything. Yeah. And then you can like mute's a great first step. The thing is like muting at least allows you to look on your own terms. Like I'll never forget Mm. my ex never posted. So I didn't think to do anything. And then I remember I was like at an airport with a friend and I logged on and like, I just saw his post and I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't ready for it. And it just like swept me off my feet. It was so (laughs) devastating. So I'm like, okay, at least I need to mute because then I can look on my own terms. I'll be prepared for it. I kind of know what I'm getting into, mm-hmm. you know? And you're not unfriending them. So they don't know you had to exactly. take an action. The mute is like a great option for that. Mute's also a really great option for your ex's friends. Like if mm-hmm. you know his, you know, their friends are actively posting and you're going to see like a night out with them and you don't want to have to see that stuff, you can mute them. Your ex's family, you can mute them. Like, I'd say anyone that is going to make your stomach drop when you see something of theirs, I would just recommend muting. And again, like no one knows if you mute them. So it's not like you're, you know, doing anything like that. Um, removing is, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's good to eventually remove your ex from not only from who you follow, if we're talking Instagram, but also from following you, because I know a lot of people mm-hmm. feel a sense of power when their ex is seeing their stuff. We all have been there where we're like, oh, they're watching, you know, <laughs> which makes you feel powerful for a moment. But then you yeah. also have to recognize like you're just giving them more of your power, like you're giving mm-hmm. them your energy, because I guarantee when you post, you're like, Oh, are they going to see it? What are they going to think? Are they going to reply? Like all that stuff. So I definitely recommend like removing on both ends of um, social media with your ex. And then if you're someone who like has not great impulse control, which like, hello, that that is definitely me. Mm -hmm. Um, And like you find yourself compulsively looking, blocking is probably a better option because you're not blocking because I always tell people like you're not doing any of this out of spite for your ex. Like you're not like punishing your ex. You're just doing this for you to like give you give yourself like a layer of protection. So if you find yourself constantly looking, I would block because it kind of gives like other obstacle in the way of of going to look, especially if your ex like has a public profile. So you unfollow and then like you can still look every 20 minutes. Um blocking is a good option. I mean, I've, I mean, and I've done this, like you go to your ex's page and you start seeing their following number go up, like who they're following. And you're like, who are they following? And then you start getting like, are they following like in my, are they following girls? Like who, you know, it's just, and there's like another, like, even if it's private, oh, they posted something like, I wonder what they posted. And then you're like, Hey friend, can you tell me what my ex just posted? You know, it's like, we, we go there. Of course we go there. Like we get very obsessive. We go there. We definitely go there. And I have the friends who are like, he hasn't talked to me in two weeks, um, but he's looking at all my stories. And you know how people, you know, we know sometimes you're just sitting on the toilet looking at someone's stories. You don't even realize or they'll go yeah. really fast because they don't care to block you or mute you or whatever. And it's like, it really doesn't mean anything, but okay. I know. That's like such a big uh, one. What does it mean yeah. if my ex looks at my Instagram stories? And it's like, it probably honestly doesn't mean any. Like, if you think about it, if your ex wanted to get back together with you 
and they're like, I'm going to send her a secret message by looking at her stories. What and a that, loser. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to communicate in Instagram code and just watch her stories for like three weeks. And then she's going to have to assume that we're going to get back. You know, it's like, no, no one, no adult, mature adult is going to act like that. That is the key. That yeah. is the key because you were talking about quotes before and I'm very much a quote person, but I, yeah. you know, obviously there has to be action behind it. And one of the more recent quotes you posted is you'll keep meeting the same person in different bodies until you learn the lesson. Yeah, isn't that one crazy? It's so good. So give us some details on what you mean by that because it's, yeah. it, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, it's like definitely my story. So, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, like I kept going after men that were emotionally unavailable, were afraid of commitment. Like it literally happened three times in a row where it was like, I don't like either I don't want to define our relationship or I don't see myself ever getting married or whatever it looks like. It just happened three times in a row. And so I was like, okay, like what, what's going on here? I could tell myself that I just like have a bad picker, which I think a lot of us will say, sure. but I think what it comes down to is like, I had to take a minute and pause and reflect and be like, okay, what about me is bringing this up and like the truth is for me like I think a lot of it comes down to our self-esteem and how we think about ourselves mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was marriage material so like I'm not going to attract someone who thinks I'm marriage material if I don't think I'm married like I didn't think highly of myself right um I didn't think I was commitment material so I didn't attract commitment and so I had to change how I felt about myself I had to you know really work on my self-esteem and my self-worth and then I and then I was in a position the next time when I started dating where I on like the second date, I'd be like, are you someone that sees yourself getting married? And I was like, I don't have time for like waiting oh. around. It's not like I'm saying, do you want to marry me? But I'm just like, hey, are we are we barking up the same tree here? Like, if not, bye. Um, and yeah, so that's what it to me. That's what it meant. And I think, you know, we go through this of like, you know, unfortunately, sometimes people go through like multiple abusive relationships and they yeah. have to like get down to the core of the, you know, maybe childhood trauma that they went through. So it's like, if we're repeating a pattern, we have to learn the lesson. Otherwise we're going to get, keep getting fed the same thing. Right. Right. How long were you in those three relationships? The, I mean, so the first one was, they were short. Like they were, I mean, the first one was probably six months Mm -hmm. The second one was six months and then the third one was a year and a half. Oh, I had a, I had a pattern of six months, six months, and then a year and a half too. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yep. But yep. I was also, it's so funny. It's like I was in a position at one point where like I would, you know, go like meet a guy at a bar and we would talk for like a couple hours and the next day I'd be like, I met someone, you know, like I was like just so, I wanted a relationship so bad that I was like just creating these stories in my head of like just wanting to be with someone so bad, you know? Oh my God. That is so interesting. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. And some people, you know, I watch YouTube videos. I'm I like, I'm obsessed with like blogs and all of that. And, you know, with a lot of much, much younger girls, not super young, like 25. Yeah. <laughs> like Alex Earl. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I watch them doing the get ready with me for a date. Okay. I saw this girl do this and she was talking about how she already built a life with this guy and they haven't even been on a first date. She doesn't know what he looks like in person yet. And yeah. I think that is such like, I even thought, oh, stop posting, get ready for, get ready with me for a date. Just don't even talk about it. Just I know. Because then people are going to ask about how it goes. And if yes, it doesn't go are, well, then it feels embarrassing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And for, for people who have any sort of presence online, you're also going to see the judgment. And you know, we're all bored. You're yeah. all you're gonna hurt yourself. You're going to look at your comments. You're going to whatever. And, you know, people are not nice. And that's why it's so funny because I think you do the same thing on your uh, breakup bestie page, your breakup bestie. I don't really post my personal life. And no, I don't. On the internet. Yeah. You will not know if I'm dating, going through a breakup, <laughs> if I've been with my boyfriend for 10 years, if I'm married. You just won't. You will never know. Yeah. Never yeah. And know. I don't post it because I'm like, no one going through a breakup wants to see me in a marriage with a baby. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's oh, like, that's actually such a yeah. Good it's thing. like no one wants. I just to, don't. No one wants to see my, that in my business. Like for what? 
yeah. for what? And, you know, um, I'll post like maybe one picture on story. So it's not on the feed. And like recently I've been thinking, should I post something? So people like get to know me and I'm like, ugh, I really don't know. I don't know if I want to do it because I don't need or want strangers in my business. Cause you kind of, yeah. you want to build a strong relationship. And this is like you said, this is something I learned later yeah. after all those BS relationships. It's like, I'm going to step up and step into being this different person. The person that I believe would be a match for my ideal person, right? Just step into that, stop being that, you know, that insecure, low self-esteem, all of that. Like you just have to switch something on. Something has yeah. to go on. And that's why I started all the wellness stuff and everything. And I cried. At, do you remember I was crying at that event? Like, I think there was snot coming out of my nose. There was a lot of crying at those there events. There was a lot of I crying. Loved them. I, I, we would like pass tissues around. I specifically <laughs> remember that. And I was like, this is amazing. Because like oh the only God. other place I'd seen that is in like rehab. So it was like. <laughs> oh, my God. See, it's, it is. See, you know what? That's why this is where you're meant to be. Because you have experience with trauma. Yeah. Both sides yeah. of it, being in it, coaching through it, guiding through it and being yeah. on the other side. That's why you give really good advice. Thank you. And it's so interesting. Cause like, I mean, I've always had this element of like detox from your ex. Cause I mm -hmm. think it is yep. really important and it's fun. Cause I like, I always related so much like quitting alcohol versus like quitting your ex. Like oh, I just, God. there's so many parallels. It's, it's, to me, it's crazy. Like there's just so many connections between going through a breakup and getting sober. And then as I've like grown my podcast and stuff, like I've had like the psychologist guy winch on and I've had like all these, and I had Dr. Amen on and it's like, awesome. it's literally the same thing in your brain. Like it's the same thing when you're on drugs and in a relationship, your brain's doing the same thing. Like there's different levels, but when you go through a breakup, your brain looks for your ex. Your brain's like, where's my source of dopamine? You know? And so, and then your brain's like, oh my God, it's not here. And that's why we feel like physical pain. And so that's why it's like so important, I think, to go through this like detoxing process where you're not seeing your ex, you're not talking to them, you're not smelling them, you're not hearing their voice. Like all that stuff is going to mess with your brain's ability to like let go of this person. Wow. It is like going through withdrawals. Totally. I mean, it's, yeah, that's what people say. Like, and it turned and like Guy Winch talks about it so well. He's like, I've just seen so many people who are like professional, smart, like very capable people go through a breakup and do the craziest shit, like wow. drive past their ex's house, like go look in there. You know, it's just like, it drives you to do such wild things. And it's like the same thing when someone's like coming, like going through drugs. It's like, yeah. so there is so much stuff. And I think that's like something that we haven't, like, I love talking about it just because I, I think it brings some validation to, to people who are going mm -hmm. through a breakup. Cause they're like, it's just a breakup. Why do I feel this insane? Yeah. Why is my body going through things like yeah. being crazy? Like maybe yeah, uh, you lose a little bit of sleep, but like my entire body hurts. Like I can't. Yeah. Stand. yeah. Wow. That is crazy. So how do you stop being an investigator? Ooh. Um, so I, I think like, so if someone comes to me and they're like, I cannot stop looking at my ex's stuff. Like I just mm -hmm. can't stop. What I tell them to do is like, okay, for the next week, you're allowed to look whenever you feel like it. Like, I don't want you to have any judgment of yourself. Like you have a free pass for the next week, except before you look, like when you feel like when you get the urge to look, I want you to take out your journal or like a note in your phone. And I want to write down how you're feeling. That's it. And then after you look, you have to write down how you're feeling. And then the next time before you look again, you have to read through that stuff. And it helps establish like a pattern of why am I looking? Am I, cause some people look, am I looking because I want to like validate the pain I'm feeling? Cause sometimes people look because they want to bring about more pain. Sometimes people look because they're bored and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe I just need a new activity to do when I have time on my hands. Right. Um, sometimes people look because, you know, they just feel, they have to get to the bottom of what's going on. So they find, they think they're going to find an answer on their ex's social media. So just being 
curious about what you're doing and then also just looking like how crappy you feel afterward because I guarantee you're never coming away from your ex's social media and being like wow I feel so much better <laughs> like driving um, by their house and their car is not there uh that's not gonna make you feel good <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so just like being very curious about why you're doing it and how it makes you feel I think that's the best way to like break it because you'll realize like your expectations of how it's going to make you feel versus how it actually makes you feel are so different. Yeah. It's such a good point. And, uh, the next step in your book, the next, the part three is healing and rebuilding. And my, well, it starts with accepting the breakup. How does that work? Because yes. I think that, you know, even when I've broken it off with someone, accepting the breakup is still really hard. Even if you initiated it. Yeah. Yeah. Accepting the, it's like, it's such a key component. And I always and I remind people, sorry like, to interrupt. I love that it comes yeah. into, it, it comes into the process at part three. Yeah. Halfway yeah. Because you can't accept process. it. Yeah. People right. are always like, I can't believe I still want my ex back. I'm like, I can like, of course I can <laughs> believe you, you still want them back. Like it's, you're a human. Of course you want them back. Right. Like, this person caused you all this pain and like them coming back would take it all away. Like, obviously that's the first thing you want to think about. So, yeah. um, I like to remind people that accepting does not mean that you approve of the situation. Cause I think a lot of the times people will be like, how can I accept this when they cheated on me? How can I accept this when they ghosted me? How can, and it's like, you don't have to approve of it. You can still think that they, you know, they're an asshole or like whatever you want to think, but like, you do need to accept that it happened for your own sanity um, and I really believe that the way we accept something is not through our like own thinking. It's just how we act. So the best way to accept your breakup is to act as if you've already accepted it. Um, so what, how does someone act if they've accepted their breakup? They probably don't look at their, their ex's social media anymore. Um, they probably want to do everything they can to move forward. So they're doing things like going to therapy. They're, they're going to exercise. Um, those, I think actions change our feelings. I don't think our thoughts change our feelings. So I really encourage people to like, how would you feel? How would you act if you've already accepted this breakup and we're moving forward and do that? That's how you're going to eventually accept it instead of just sitting around waiting for them to come back. I love that. I love that. And you go into the could haves and should haves and yeah. treat yourself like your best friend. That is so cute. And be yeah. kinder to yourself. Those are part of that, of that chapter in the book. I love yeah. that. I love that. Cause that, because the could haves and the should haves are so crazy. You could yeah. literally go on and on. Yeah. about all of the could haves and should haves. I used to have this thing. Oh my God, what a freaking weirdo. I used to have this thing about Disneyland, Kendra. Okay. okay. I didn't want to go to Disneyland unless okay. the person was going to be my husband because I thought you make such crazy memories at Disneyland and you know, yeah. whatever, you know, if I take a picture here, it's going to be like my Disneyland picture and it's going to be my one. And like, I... I started to go to Disneyland with these guys that I thought, oh yeah, of course I'm going to marry him. He's this and that. Not, not even, you know, at that time before, before the relationship I'm in now, I used to think like I was going to marry everyone for some reason. Like I just thought, oh, totally. Definitely, like we're not going to break up. This is like a relationship. Really. Yeah, I think most people are in relationships. Like you know, I think most people, and that's what like. And that's what most people are like, how do I know it was like a real relation? I think a lot of times we try to like invalidate our experience because we're just like, well, maybe if I realize that it wasn't a real experience, then I won't feel this crappy about it ending. I think a lot of times we do that. So they'll be like, it was all a lie. If they ended it, that means it was all a lie. And I'm like, the breakup does not invalidate anything that you went through prior to the breakup. I think that's like a big thing. We tend to, and that's why I talk a lot about being kind to yourself in this section because we get to this point where we're either like completely blaming ourselves for what happened. We're just spending all of our time thinking of how we could have fixed it. We are invalidating our own feelings. We're saying like, you should be over this by now. It's just, we're just really beating ourselves up at that point of the breakup. And it's really important that you're doing the opposite. 
Yeah, that's so, so true. And the, you know, I would go to Disneyland, I would take a picture with them, then we would break up. And I'm like, I can't ever go to Disneyland because me and this person, we were supposed to get married and this and that. And I had to snap out of it. Like you can do things in yeah. relationships and it doesn't have to, you know, a, maybe we could have gotten married. Maybe we, I should have done this. We could have whatever. And it's like, no, just go through the relationship like a normal human being with no pressure, have the serious conversations. And if it doesn't work out, stop thinking about X, Y, and Z. Just because I went to Disneyland doesn't mean I had to marry this person. And now I'm a big failure, yes, right? It was, it exactly. was a weird thing that I had. Yeah. Breakups aren't failures. I just think, I think we automatically personalize it. We make it mean we did something wrong. We failed. And like this, and, and I tell people like, I get why people try to always blame themselves because mm -hmm. when you can blame yourself, you can take accountability for it. I think the scariest thing is being in like what you believe to be a really amazing relationship and then just have the other person be like, I don't love you anymore. Like that's, terrifying because you're like how am I ever going to feel safe in a relationship again so it makes so much sense to be like okay I know what I did so I, I can fix it and this will never happen again and that's just like one of the like crappy parts of life is sometimes we have these great relationships that don't work out um and we can't control it it's just like you know kind of the cost of admission for living on this planet and existing within relationships um but i get it like it's very scary to just think that a, a good relationship could end it's scary to think that someone could say they want to spend the rest of your, their life with you and then change their mind but that happens and how about when two people are in a relationship and they love each other it's a great relationship but that person is not for them. They're not for each other. And one of them realizes it and breaks up. Do you yeah. go through the same trauma? Is it different? Are the steps different? What's that healing process? Honestly, I will say, so like, I've heard probably every breakup story in the book at this point of like oh, why okay. a relationship ends. And it's honestly incredibly rare that the advice changes. Honestly, like I just think if if we get down to the feelings of what's going on, it's the same feelings, whether that was a two month situationship or a 25 year marriage, things do change. Advice does change when there's kids involved and like that whole element of going through a breakup where you do have to communicate with your ex around kids and have to navigate a divorce, which you know very, very well. Um, but for the most part, the breakup's the same. And like, I think it's Brene Brown that talks about it of like, you know, we can't like compare our traumas necessarily. Cause I like, I've gotten messages from women who say like, I got out of a 20 year marriage and this three month relationship I had post divorce has brought me to my knees. Like I'm in so wow. much pain, you know? So it's just like, we just never know. So I think it's really just honoring and validating the experience you are having and not trying to be like, well, it was only this long, so I should only be able to grieve for this long. Um, they didn't do anything wrong to me. So why do I feel angry? It's like, you can feel angry at the situation. You can feel angry at God, like you can feel angry at anything. Um, so I just, I'd really try to make sure people are, are, val are not invalidating their own experience when they're going through the breakup because that's, you know, it hurts if it hurts. And that's right. really it. Right. That's such a good point. I see a lot of tough love advice, like give yourself two months and you yeah. should get over it. And I remember, I think you posted a video about, um, you know, six months post breakup, yeah. Your crew that you've assembled might not be there for you the same as they used to be. They might, might not be checking up you, checking, checking up you, checking <laughs> up on you. I'm delirious, Kendra. I can't even like, I'm so happy this is a conversation I want to have with someone I really love and respect. Yeah. I'm like sitting here like, what are these You're doing great. Wrong? You're doing amazing. Ugh, ugh. So, <laughs> well, Kendra, what was I saying? Uh oh no, just saying like six months down the road. Oh, the six hurt. month thing. Yeah. It is such sorry for that brain fart. It is such a good point. And I think that's something that people should just know 
at the start of anything when you're relying on other people, which you can do, right? You have friends for that reason, family for that reason. Of course, you don't want to put everything on them, whatever it is. But people understand when you're going through a breakup, you need them a little bit more and they should or what, whatever the word is, they, they should be there for you a little bit more than they are. Right. So the group chat is going, you know, there, there's more going on in there during the first six months of the breakup. But after that, it might dwindle away. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it's very important for people to know that beforehand, because when you get to that six months and it's like, no one cares, no one's checking up on me. It's, it's, it's devastating, but it's not. And I still feel crappy. Yeah. yeah. And you still feel crappy. Exactly. Because, you know, the healing process, is there a point within the healing process where, you know, all of these activities depend on you taking action, right? Mm-hmm. But is there a part of the healing process where you're still not depending on other people, but where you're still just going to your friends, asking this and that, and you kind of want to lean on them still. I know it's just a natural human thing, but is the healing process more, okay, now it's time for you to focus on you and what you need to do. We felt our feelings, we've done this, or is this kind of, you know, are these four parts just intertwined and you're constantly doing this work all the time until you get to a point where it doesn't hurt as badly? Yeah, no, that's a really, really good question. It definitely, you know, I did like an episode on like the stages of a breakup. And I'm like, it's, it's a hard thing for me to define because you are going to hop stages quite a bit and you're going to go from one to the other and then back to, and then forward four. It's like, there's not really, there's not like a defined timeline for a lot of this stuff. Mm, Um, It's very good to know. But I, I mean, I do, I think it should just kind of evolve a little bit. You know, it's like, I, I would hope that you're not talking to your friends about the exact same thing you're talking to them. Like if Mm -hmm. the classic example is like, if you're six months later, you're still saying, I still can't believe he said this and he did that. And it's like, okay, we understand that that happened, but like, we do need to move forward. But if it's kind of, cause I, I also think breakups happen in layers because, Mm -hmm. you know, as we go, as time goes on, we start healing different things. So if, you know, you, in the beginning, you're just talking about like how sad you are. And then two months later, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm like really mad. I'm like seeing things that I didn't see before. And so then you go to your friends and you're like, I'm feeling super mad. Like, I can't believe I didn't see these red flags at the beginning. Mm. And as long as it's like, you know, you're going to take some steps back and it's going to be really repetitive for some time. But I, I would hope that like it evolves with time. Um, There's also going to be a time where like you do start dating and you're going to feel a new wave of pain. I cannot tell you how normal it is to cry about your ex after your first date post breakup or how weird it's going to feel when you kiss someone for the first time or how weird it's going to feel when you have sex for the first time. Like all that stuff's going to feel really weird. Um, but that's normal, you know, it's just like another part of this whole deal. There's never a, like a finish line where you're like, all right, I'm done. It's more subtle. Like you'll, you'll have a day where you're like, I think I'm over this, you know, it's not this like grand finish line where it's like, okay, I've done steps one through 10. Right. No, I'm good. Right. It's just another feeling that you're yes, feeling. Right? Exactly. It's another feeling. And I think it's so like that is such good advice because I think people are looking for a timeline. So that's why that six month video really stuck in my head because it's like, oh yeah, there's a point where everyone cares. Just like when you get a new job, God forbid yeah. someone passes away, whatever it is, and like you're feeling the excitement or the grief or whatever it is long after the six months. But some people, you know, it's not. It's also up to you to do this type of work. Yes. Right. Because it's, it's you who went through it. It's you who needs to get over it or or go through it. Or I like how you said you have to evolve, right? You're evolving through this process. Um, And there's a point in your book and in your content that uh, you distinguish between missing your ex and just missing a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. And um because it's human nature to want a relationship, you know, Mm -hmm. like bio we're like biologically programmed to like Mm -hmm. find a mate and do all that stuff. So, um, so it is, and we intertwine relationship with our ex, especially in the beginning. Like that's all you're thinking about in terms of relationship is your ex. And I actually, in my like Q and a today, someone asked like, how do I get over the fear that 
my ex, like no one's ever going to make me feel the way that my ex did, or like, I'm never going to find a relationship like my ex. And I'll say like, list out exactly what made your ex so great, because my guess is it's going to come down to like, they treat me nicely. They get along with my family. They're good listeners and like just very basic (laughs) characteristics of like a good person, you know? So it's like, you have to just like, there's, it's probably pretty rare that you're going to have something with your ex. That's only going to ever happen with your ex. Like it's very likely that everything that made your ex special is something that will exist within another relationship. So I, I think that's, what's really important is you cannot tie relationships in general to your ex, because there are thousands of other people in your area that can provide the same exact thing your ex did. Yes, there's like a vibe and chemistry and all like that stuff you do need to find. But if you really break it down, it's highly unlikely that you're never going to find someone who makes you laugh, who can listen to you and who gets along with your family. Like, yeah. Uh, I love that. I love that. I was stuck for so long on the fact that my last ex was nice. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Nice. That is bare minimum. <laughs> like the bar is on the ocean floor. Yeah. <laughs> he was so nice. Oh my God. I can't ever find someone who's nice. Like what? And my yeah. therapist would say like, but was X like, was this nice that he did? Or was this nice that he said? I'm like, oh, I guess you're right. Not to say he was a bad or evil or mean person. Yeah. But he wasn't the nicest human on planet earth and being nice to your partner is like bare. (laughs) What business do I have speaking to someone who's not nice friend, boyfriend, whatever it is. It's like nice. (laughs) I was stuck on the fact that this person was nice. That's sad. Kendra, that's no, (laughs) I'm laughing because it's so relatable and Um, it is funny when I'm like, tell me exactly what made them so special. And it's like, they were nice and they were funny. And it's like, <laughs> we should all be okay. ashamed of ourselves. We should all be ashamed of ourselves. Oh my God. Oh, what is wrong nice. with us? Uh, but you're right. It's it's relatable because we're all, these are the things we're all thinking about, right? Exactly. It's like, and I think that's why people like my page so much. Yes. I will tell them like, hey, this is, you know, something as simple as like, I post, someone was like, is it normal that my breakup's harder on my period? And I'm like, totally. Yeah. And people are like, oh my God, like <laughs> other people have harder times on their breakup when they're on their period. It's like, yeah, life is just hard in general when you're going through that. Like, oh yeah, it's going to make God. the breakup harder. So oh my God. that's the one yeah. thing that the internet does that's so great. It just like, we're all having the same experience. <laughs> the sa- We have not had a unique experience. Yeah. Ever. Ever. No, yeah. Ne- like never ever. That's my favorite never, thing about TikTok. I've realized oh that I'm God. like, oh wow, we're the, we're all the same. We're yeah. all the same. We all do the we all used to do the same things. We all used to listen to the same songs, the same riddles, the same this, the same that yeah. we're the same shit. Like, and, and I didn't even know you existed, right? It's like it's crazy. I love I yeah. love the internet. Me too. Uh, okay. <laughs> So back to my favorite workbook, part four is moving on in your journey. So, yeah. you know, you have signs that you're over your ex. Before that, you have to find forgiveness and all of that. How do you find forgiveness for someone, towards someone who has kind of done you wrong? So forget yeah. about that. We both loved each other a lot. It just bad. T- it was bad timing. We weren't made for each other. They yeah. were, were nice, but what up, you know, how do you how do you forgive someone who's caused you pain? Yeah. I, and so I like to say that like forgiveness can happen in little tidbits. Like you don't have to like forgive this whole situation, but like, let's say, so I'll use my example. So from 18 to 21, I was in a relationship with a horrible human being, like mm. total, like actual, like narcissistic personality disorder, yes. um, like, a, you know, a, and yep. It was, you know, stole a bunch of money from me and my family. Like, it was just terrible. And it took me, it took me so long. No, it's, it's gnarly. Um, But it took me so long to, the last piece of me getting over him was the forgiveness element. And, you know, I couldn't forgive a lot of the things that he did to me necessarily. But what I could recognize is like, 
he was just clearly like a super, super sick person. And Mm. there was part of me that believed the things he would say about me. And that's why I stayed. I think the thing is like, I stayed in a relationship that was very toxic. And yes, there was a lot of things involved. But like, I think just being able to see like, he's a really like sick person um, that I don't need to associate myself with. And I forgive myself for staying in that relationship. And I forgive him not because I think he, you know, deserves the best. I just, I forgive the, you know, I forgive him for what he, you know, what he did because I want to move on. Mm, So it's really forgiving them for your own benefit. Totally. Yeah. Just that, that's just all about. Because the thing is like forgiveness doesn't need to be communicated. I've, I have not, you know, I never communicated with that person ever again. I just forgave them because I was like, I can't hang on anymore. And I was able to see my part in the situation. And I realized too, like a big part of my forgiveness was I hadn't forgiven myself for the situation. Mm. So what do you think, Kendra, about closure? I need closure. I I need closure. Like it comes in some like beautiful wrapped box with a bow on it. You know, that's (laughs) that's always what I think about people that are like, I need closure. And I'm like, great analogy. Just want it like delivered to your house. Mm -hmm. Um, So closure is an illusion that I think people believe will make their pain go away, even though it won't. Um, I think, I think if people, when someone comes to me and says, I'm going to approach my ex because I want closure, Mm -hmm. I can pretty well assume that they just want to know exactly why their ex ended the relationship because they want to argue their point and say, I will change these things. We can work on these. They just want to be able to argue their case if they're having some kind of closure conversation. Mm -hmm. If you are broken up with, that was closure. The relationship is over. That's that's it. Um, And you also have to realize that a lot of the times when someone ends a relationship and doesn't say why, it's it's typically because they don't even really know how to communicate with, because, you know, if, if you've ever been in a relationship where like, you just kind of lost feelings for the other person, they didn't do anything wrong. You're just like, you're just not my person. Um, you can't really, you can't even really give them an exact reason. You're just like, I just don't feel this anymore. Um, so closure is something that you give yourself by just moving forward. Like you close the door. You're like, okay, this chapter's over. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to go the opposite direction. Um, But like this quest for closure that we go on just keeps people stuck for so long because they are just hunting for something that doesn't exist. And even if they found the pot at the end of the rainbow, like they would still feel really heartbroken. (laughs) Like it doesn't negate anything that you're already experiencing. Mm, mm. I, I love that because the bad advice I see online, a lot of it is about closure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I've been a coach, like coaching someone and they'll tell me their therapist is uh, is advising them to reach out to their ex to get closure. And I'm like, no, (laughs) no, their therapist. I'm like, what? This is okay. So because you and I have met in the self-care world, wellness world, you will know that there are a lot of very, uh, well-known people in the space who also make you do that. They make you call people yes. right during their seminars or whatever it is, people who've done you wrong. And like, you're crying, like you haven't spoken to this person in 10 years and you're crying and telling them how much they hurt you at, uh, over my dead body, no. over <laughs> my dead body. Well, I let someone know that they impacted me that much. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Like you can, I think Mm -mm. that stuff is like important to like write down yourself, but like drafts, exactly. Keep it in your drafts. No, No. (laughs) because that's it. Like, I remember when I wanted to reach out to my ex, my, my like mentor was like, you're literally just, you're taking your power and you're like, here you go. Right. And you're prolonging everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is like, you really think they're going to say something that impactful? Like they're, they're probably going to be like, I'm sorry. Or they're going to be like, 
I don't know. I just like, I can't be with you. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. you're either going to go through the breakup the exact same way over again. You're going to feel so frustrated and Ugh. like so let down by their response. They're going to be like, what do you want me to say? Yeah. <laughs> You also I might send this long text and just never get a reply. Oh my god! Oh, why do people <laughs> do that? Why do they do that? I've yeah. never been that person, but I have several friends who they have to send that text. Yeah, they have to send the novel, and I'm just sitting there like, it's it's written very well, but don't send it. You already got it out. Don't send yeah. it. And they're just counting the seconds and the minutes and the yeah. hours. You know, I'm not downplaying it. You feel bad. But if people had the tools that you provide, I think that the journey can go so much better from them. And you come out, come out the other side, actually learning something, being a, you know, more evolved person, right? Because you do need like, you know, you're saying you have to move on. The moving on journey needs to end with you moving on. And that doesn't mean to into another relationship. It just means that one. Exactly. Yeah. A hundred percent. And people will say like, like, we'll ask, are there people that don't get over breakups? And I tell them the only people that don't get over breakups are the people who consciously make a decision not to get over their ex. They're just like, wow, I'm just staying here. Like, I'm not going to move on. Those are the only people that don't move on. I, in my opinion, I just like the same people that are like, are there people that never find someone again after a breakup? And I say the only people that aren't going to find it are the people who actively decide that they're not going to find anyone. Wow. It's all about making decisions, taking action. Oh, I love it. I love it. Kendra, do you think that the breakup bestie workbook, well, it's the breakup workbook. Is this an appropriate Valentine's Day gift? I think, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think it really is. And you mentioned situationships earlier. Yeah. I, honest to God, if you have a teenager in your world, Oh, yeah. Not if they're in a relationship now or, you know, they're going to get into their first one in five years. I feel like this is a really good tool to give to them to just have. Totally. Just have I would, I mean, to think of the things that I would have avoided had I had some of this stuff in high school is They should give this out. Wild. Ed. They really, no, honestly, they should. Yeah. No, they I mean, I, really- I think it's great. And like, if yeah. you're going through a breakup and you're listening to this on Valentine's Day, like buy this for yourself. Yes. Yes. It is. This stuff is fun. It's fun. It I, is fun. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, it's like, purse yes. Too, by the way. yes. I mean, if you have the kind of purse I hold, you know. <laughs> it's nice and it. small. There's so much stuff to go through it. You can always like, and it's so fun. Also, what I love, I love going back and reading like old journal entries. So fun to like go back and read what you wrote because you're like, wow, was I on a different planet at that point? Kendra, I <laughs> swear to God, sometimes I don't remember who I've dated. Yeah, you have to like go back. I and, don't know and- their names. What was their name? Who is my my friend is telling me a story. I'm like, who? I date for how long? What was, when was that? Oh yeah. Oh my God. What was his last name? Do you remember anyone's last name? I never remember their last name. No. Oh, well, it's so funny. Cause I, I mean, I think about my exes a lot mainly because I'm drawing from personal experience, yes. but I was reading my journal at one point and I was like talking about how mad I was at a Michael. And I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> But, God, that just that's, shows, that's but it just shows that everything passes. Like in a month from now, you're going to feel different. Two months from now, you're going to feel different. Six months from now, a year from now. Like, and I love to tell people like there will be a time when you're sitting at a girl's night with your friends and you are laughing about how you thought you were going to marry that person. You there will be a time to be laughing and shaking. Yeah. Like you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. You guys <laughs> Oh my God. And I got that workbook. Oh my God. I was obsessed with it. Yeah. Literally that is going to happen. You are so, so right. Kendra, yeah. this is not the only resource you have. So TikTok and Instagram at your breakup bestie, but you also have yeah. courses and coaching. What I else do you have? Um, I have a 30 day no contact challenge. If you're someone oh who God. just like cannot stop reaching out to your ex, I have that. Um, I have four different online courses. Actually, if you're listening to this today, from today and tomorrow, my course bundles 50% off for Valentine's Day. So um, and then I have my podcast, Heal Your Heartbreak, which yes. there's like 151 episodes to binge. Oh my God, you are doing it so right. And speaking of binging, just go 
on Kendra's TikTok or Instagram, wherever, and just scroll. All you have to do, it's like one big series of a hundred videos. You can just sit there and you do such a great job. They're all concise. They're all things that people don't even talk about. That six month thing, when I heard it, I'm like, oh my God, I have to remember to mention this because it's so good. No one talks about that. They yeah. don't talk about it. So you are such a valuable person to follow, such a valuable person in general. Um, of course. And I love you. Love seeing love you. you. Love, love talking to you. And I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. this. I'm so proud of you too. Look at us both in our social, like I who can't. would ever thought we'd be like meeting as like social media creators. Ever, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Social media, what? We were crying. Okay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on this podcast are not legal advice that can be relied on. They are based solely on the limited information provided. These opinions do not create any attorney-client relationship. Those seeking legal advice should contact an attorney in the appropriate jurisdiction and practice area.